Would you like to be able to take audio input such as this, process it, and then get out the notes just like this? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. We're going to use Python together with the FFT, Fast Fourier Transformation, and we're going to get this sort of data out and look at how to do this in Python. I'm going to skip a lot of the heavy math that is applied to the FFT. It's an actually beautiful algorithm and really not that complex at a pure mathematical level. There's plenty of other videos on that though, so I'll point you to those in the description below. Three blue, one brown has probably my favorite. Now, before we jump into the Python code, I'm going to cover a couple of audio engineering type concepts. We're going to use the term hertz a lot, and it describes frequency. Hertz is basically the number of times that something happens in a second. It could be any number of things. In this case, we're going to use it for two primary concepts. The first is just what note we're talking about. And those frequencies are going to be somewhere between 10, 20-ish hertz up to 8,000 or so hertz. The human ear can hear much higher than that, though not, I think, to around 20,000 hertz we can hear. But that's the range that these songs are going to be in that we're going to want to deal with. Actually, typically at the lower end of that as well. So these audio waves coming at our ears, the number of complete cycles in that audio wave is the, the frequency of it, and that determines the pitch that we're hearing. The other time that you'll hear hertz is the number of audio samples per second in the audio file. So when we're recording the sound originally and we're measuring where we're at in that audio wave, how many of those samples are we taking per second? The more of them that we take, the higher resolution the audio is, and the better that it's, it's going to sound, typically up to a point. As you add more and more notes, simultaneous chords, it becomes more and more complex of a signal. FFT is what breaks this apart into the constituent signals that made up the actual sound that you're listening to. So the very first thing that we need to do is get this audio into an array. And this array is just a list of numbers that show us where we are at on the graph of the audio wave. We then can take this audio sample and put it into FFT. So it's important to understand that the array size going into FFT is the same length of the array coming back out of FFT. And that array that's coming back out from FFT, that's your frequency range. It's, it's a bunch of buckets. During the size of that audio sample, how many times did it count each of the frequencies for each of those buckets. Now what's a little interesting with this is the number of buckets you have is dependent on the size of the audio sample. And that's something that I see a lot of questions about FFT, so make sure you understand that. The size of the input signal is the same as the number of buckets of frequencies that you get. So that means longer audio signals, you're going to have more buckets. And that also means that the, the hertz for each of those buckets is completely different. And that's why you call a special function, like you see here, that will give you the hertz for each of those buckets, and then you need to deal with those. So that's one of the complexities in programming something like this, is that the buckets are not going to necessarily correspond to the piano keys. So you have to do some adjustments there, like you'll see that I do in this code. Now the values in this array, they are sum of squares, so they get quite big. You'll, you'll see in the millions coming back if you throw a whole song into this, which by the way I don't recommend, but that's, that's what I showed you there. So since these values can become so big, this is why I do two passes over the song. The first pass, I'm just finding what is the maximum 
y value that we're ever going to have. And I basically just normalize it so that that is one and then everything else is something below it. That makes for a, a good enough visualization here. And also the y, we're plotting the amplitude because that array that comes back from FFT, those are complex numbers. You've got a real part, you've got an imaginary part. The imaginary part is the phase and I'm simply not using it for this example. So once you have the FFT broken apart into these frequency distributions, you can actually put that back together into a audio that you could play. So you can alter it while it's in this state. That's how you do things like clip, maybe an annoying hum that's at a higher frequency range, or you can shift the sample to different ranges. This is how they did the Jingle Cats song that was popular a while back. I could do the same thing with my dog quite easily. Okay, maybe that could use some work, but you get the idea. Uh, frequency shifts, would that be something you'd be interested in seeing a video on in the future? Let me know in the comments. You'll also notice that the array coming out of this is both positive and negative. It's very common to apply an absolute value to this so that it just folds everything up together and increases the amplitude. Now, you'll notice that I, so far I've talked about just throwing the array of sound into the FFT function. We're not doing that for this example. That would not work well at all. You would just get one graph, which would be for the entire song, and you would see the notes were distributed for, for the entire song, which is not that useful. What I instead do is I slide a window across, and the window length is defined to be a quarter of a second. So I'm dealing with one quarter of a second sample, and then I just slide that across the entire song. Now the step size for how that's incrementing deals with the frames per second. Say you're dealing with one second of audio and uh, you've requested 30 frames per second, then you're gonna have 30 frames total. There's gonna be 30 steps in that entire song. And at each point in this progression, I loop through the frequency counts that are coming back and I identify the top three notes, the top five notes. Those are the ones that I'm going to label on the graph. You can see here, I loop through the code and I find the highest amplitude of, of the notes. And then I also make sure that I don't have duplicates. Like I said, those bends for each frequency, they don't align exactly to the piano keyboard. So you're gonna probably have duplicates of the note that had the highest amplitude because that amplitude spike possibly spans multiple buckets that are assigned to that particular piano key. So then we just use Plotly to display all of this. We render each individual frame. And then when all of the frames are rendered, I make use of something called FFmpeg and that just brings everything together into an MP4 file. Now I'm a YouTuber, so I like to see this as video. I need an MP4 that I'm gonna put into Premiere Pro and produce this with. You might want to see this in real time and let me know in the comments, would you like to see a real time variant of, of this? I'm, I would probably be using Pygame or, or something like that to, to do that. So let's talk about overtones and then a specific type of overtone called a harmonic. You have your fundamental tone, that's the key that you hit on the piano or string, however the other instruments work. And you also have additional tones higher, higher up. That's why a middle C on a piano sounds much richer than a middle C just produced with a sine wave. If you do everything as just simple sine waves, you have that very 80s arcade sound kind of sound. Okay, that's my basic visualization. Would you like to see this go a little bit more complicated? I can certainly make it more visually stunning with more complexity going on. I could certainly analyze the overtones and perhaps incorporate that into the visualization as well. 
We can also do things where you put the FFT output back together and you produce audio from it. So you could clip certain frequency ranges or you could adjust the frequency range. Let, let me know in the comments, give the video a like, and subscribe to see more on using audio and machine learning or my other machine learning. I also do computer vision a lot.